from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Shut up. Are you serious? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's one 800 800 tom 1-800-5800-866. And we are continuing on a theme that began inadvertently during yesterday's program where it just came out. I said that um, Sarah Palin's a moron, an idiot, a boob. A lot of people upset about that. Some people very thankful that I said it, but it had to be said. Is there any reason we shouldn't call a spade a spade here? She's just an idiot. How can you vote for somebody who has an idiot on the ticket? How can you do it? And is there any problem with saying that someone's a moron if they are? Huh? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Pookie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Pookie. Okay, I'm I'm 22 years old, so I just want to speak up for the younger crowd here. You know, I've been stressing the importance of voting and whatnot, and I was excited when Sarah Palin first came out, a woman running for vice president. But like a lot of Southern Californians, I watch Good Day LA every day, and it cracks me up that the only good thing they've had to say about her is that she's made a new fashion statement with her glasses. Now, <laughs> that really... <laughs> That really throws me over the edge. <laughs> and she looks like someone you could have coffee with. <laughs> Tom, she she's an idiot. I agree with you. She's a complete idiot. And I hope that before people just go out and vote because she's a woman or not, whatnot, they really look into the facts of the whole deal here. Because the whole answer about her, oh, I read every magazine and whatnot. I mean, okay. <laughs> she's an idiot. She is an idiot. Is there any problem with saying she's an idiot? Nope, I, I completely agree with you. And anybody who has a problem with it, they really need to look at the facts because they, they make themselves look like idiots. Yeah, well, I think you're right about that. Darling, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Alfonso on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, what are Alfonso. the odds tonight in the debate if Biden gets his broad on the ropes we're going to hear the phrase from her, whatever. I mean, just like every <laughs> other broad when you corner them. You know, you try to have a, uh intellectual uh, discussion with them. Well, well, you know, whenever I get in an argument with a girl and all of a sudden I hear that, whatever. I mean, I throw my arms up like Muhammad Ali in the center of the <laughs> ring, you know. <laughs> argument won, argument done. <laughs> <laughs> and all these diehard Republicans, I mean, they go along with this, like, like blind faith, you know, when McCain said he was going to pick the best person for the job, do these diehard Republicans really, really think in their heart of hearts that she's better than Mitt Romney, Tom Ridge, Condoleezza Rice, uh, that, that House Minority Leader Bonner? Mike I mean, Huckabee. They, you know what? Don't get me wrong. She's hot. I mean, I hope she comes out tonight in, like, a micro miniskirt, fishnet. <laughs> Some CFM shoes with shiny lips and nail polish, you know? I mean, like a total whore I want to see her come out, you know? <laughs> and all these people that say they want to go shopping with her and have a cup of coffee with her and go to the PTA meeting with her, the only thing I want to do with her is drink a shot of Patron out of her belly button. And that's about it. <laughs> you probably um, have to get in line for that. Yes. Hey, Tom, take me out number nine style. Number nine style. Here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine.
It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Nico on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? I'm doing okay. Hey, man, you know what? I know she's an idiot, but moreover, dude, I cannot believe these idiots who support her, man. I mean, Tom, if she was so sharp, why have they kept her tied up in the tied up in the basement until they can like coach her some knowledge? You I think she likes to... being. Uh, by the way, I think she likes being tied up in the basement, or just you know, about any other room. T- Tom, she's so stupid. I bet she doesn't even know what shape the Oval Office is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, this whole thing is like a bad reality show or something, you know? And it's like that glazed look in her eyes. I mean, dude, I'm telling you, I cannot wait for this debate because I think it's going to be like watching someone get their ass kicked. Horribly delicious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I um, I certainly uh, have that. I, I have to T-void because it's on while I'm working, but uh, my plan is to see it for sure. Oh, yeah. All right. We'll all be watching, and hopefully the world will be, too. Love you, Tom. Blow me up old school style, man. Here you go, Nico. One eight hundred five eight hundred tom That's our telephone number. Christian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing great. Glad to talk to you. Hey, the only thing I wanted to say is how come the other side's not being brought into this at all about the stupid comments that Joe Biden has made, too? Well, I remember during the Katie Kirk interview when she was talking to him, he was talking about how Roosevelt got on the TV during the Great Depression to talk to the country when Eisenhower was the president, first of all, and there were no TVs back well, then. Well, in that case, he misspoke, and you know damn well he knows there was no TV back then. That's true, but yeah, I mean, he said it. I mean, he didn't. That's like when people call my like, show and they say, oh, "I have something all your viewers will be interested in." I, I come on, it's somebody misspeaking. It's not somebody thinking there was television in 1929. Right, but most most times when people misspeak, though, they at least correct themselves to to a certain extent. Now, yeah, now you're nitpicking. But anyway, that's all I had to say. We are talking that. about we are talking about balls out stupidity versus someone misspeaking. She's a complete airhead, and I liked what the other caller said about how her her answer tonight will probably be a lot of time whatever. I mean, that's probably one of the funniest things I've heard in a while. But no, I agree with what you're saying. I was just bringing up the other end of it. That was all. But hey, can you it. blow me up and uh, with a thank you, Jesus? I certainly can. Thank you, Jesus. Martina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Daddy. Hi. Should I say daddy? <laughs> you certainly can. You know what? I'm 24. I'm a student, a master's, trying to get my master's. And the more I'm thinking of it, I am more than qualified than her to be a vice president because I was in student government when I was in high school and in college. I also have my bachelor's in communications like she does. But the only thing I have on her, or well, more than just one thing, is I have my passport and I've been out the country. I just don't understand why these idiots are just so, like, pale in power. It's just so stupid to me. She's an idiot. (laughs) And it's like, she supposedly, because I go to um, school in Carson, Cal State Dominguez, supposedly she's supposed to be speaking on Saturday at the Home Depot Center. And, like, everybody's passed out papers saying, let's go rally and just get her out of here. Like, what is she thinking? There's nothing that she said that's going to make me say, oh, you know, you're right. she's right. Maybe um, we should vote for her because she doesn't believe in the morning after pill if um, a, dirt, a girl is um, raped by her father. You, you saw that with Katie Couric, right? She, she, was she, also, doesn't believe in, she also doesn't believe in abortion uh, if a girl is raped by her father. Like Katie said, but if she's raped by her father, what do you think? Oh, you know, we should give her more support, and she should give the child up for adoption. Why would you even put somebody through that? Plus, just, if you have a child, if you have your father's child, chances are the kid's going to be a retard. Retarded. It's not as retarded as her, though. Just a little <laughs> that, bit less. That would be hard to do. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm so happy I called. We uh, listen to you all the time. Could you um, take me out Kobe Bryant style? I certainly can, Martina. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Christopher on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Professor. Hello, Christopher. Man, if you've ever been right on your show, today would be the day. Taylor Penn is an idiot. I don't understand how these people keep calling and saying, she's so smart, she's so smart. You know, stuff to you that I hear like that that honestly, you know, scares me on the election. How many people are saying she's so smart and then she's going to get into office? And then as soon as she gets into office, she's going to start doing some stupid things. And they'll be like, oh, well, maybe she needs to get out of the office. Well, among the people, and this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a mark against him, among the people saying she's smart uh, is Barack Obama. Yeah. That, that's, that'll be the day. You know, you know. And the, 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 listening to you right now, I never actually heard about that, uh, that comment about in the newspaper about how, yeah, she looks like somebody I'd want to go shopping with. I never heard that until, until you said it on your show. And yeah, she totally does look like somebody I want to go shopping with as much as I would want to go hunting with Dick Cheney. Uh, put, put it this way, you might want to go shopping with her, but you would not want her dealing with the bank crisis, the brokerage uh, crisis on Wall Street. You wouldn't want her dealing with the collapse of the dollar. Yeah. What does she know about that? Seems like nothing. You know, it, it, to me, what doesn't make more sense is she's got, <clears throat> excuse me, she's got five kids, one with autism, where she can even have time to be a vice president. Well, she's not. She's going to dump it in the lap of her husband, who, by the way, also has a job. Yeah, maybe her husband needs to start listening to you, Tom. <laughs> you know, we're not on in Alaska. Or maybe he would. Yeah. Well, you you can listen live online. That's true. I'm, there's no doubt he should be tuned in. No doubt about it. Oksana, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, hello, Tom. Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, hi. I agree with um, what you said, that uh, I... I think so, that uh, Sarah Palin should have come out with a better answer um, during her interview to Katie Kirk, Kirk uh, regarding Supreme Court decisions. However, I also wish that media would pay as much attention to Joe Biden's misspeaking or his whatever, what he says uh, on uh, TV. Uh, as, you know, I wish that that would be fair. Otherwise, we just... What, uh, what, what comment are you referring to? I'm referring to the same comment that uh, was mentioned also earlier about 1929 and President Roosevelt, you know, going on TV and giving great speech. But you don't I, really believe, you don't really believe Joe Biden thinks there was television in 1929, do you? You know, Tom, uh, with Joe Biden, you never know. Maybe he forgot that was a, there was no television in 1929. Come on, no, you know what, he's old enough to know, believe that, me. He misspoke. <laughs> of course he misspoke. Um, I get callers on this show every day. They call in and they say, I got something your viewers would love to hear. Now, well, I know that that caller doesn't think I'm on television. Um, uh, also, well, another point, I'm just so tired to have uh, to have another slick lawyer married to another lawyer to be a president. So I'm tired of these lawyers with the lawyer spouses to be, you know, uh, presidents. I want to, uh, you know, in this case, I want to have a true hero who was in the Senate for a long time. Who was, the last, who was the last slick lawyer who was a president? Well, uh, what about uh, Bill Clinton? <laughs> uh, I don't believe he was a lawyer. By by the way, he probably also did not know or did not care whether his uh, office, uh, what shape his office was, or uh, the second Monica Lewinsky was walking into that office. Oh uh, yeah, and Monica Lewinsky—that that's a specious argument. Now, come on, you're lowering yourself. Uh, <laughs> if you were married to Hillary Clinton, you'd be trying to get it anywhere you could. Well, you know, it's a separate issue. <laughs> yeah, well, but you way. brought it. Uh, you brought it up. So if you bring up the separate issue, I'm going to respond to. It. So, but uh, actually, that's all I wanted to say. And if you have, uh, if you can take me, I don't know, do you have Barry Hussein Obama um, style to take me out? I don't know what that would be. What would that be? <laughs> okay, just take me Kobe Bryant style. All right, Oksana, here you are. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Uh, uh.
Tom Likas. Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Likas. Spirit, philosophy, and everything, man. You're the master. You're not father. You're the master. The Tom Likas Show. From the hills of Wasilla, the babes are hot, but the winners are a killer. She knows lots of politics, that's for sure. Her religion believes virginity all pure. She eats red meat, cow, veal, or moose. You know that goodness juices are the moose. Stiletto heels, giving off the land. Pit bull and lipstick, shotgun in hand. John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Well, let me tell you why I'm uh, more qualified to run for vice president than Mrs. Uh, Palin there. I have nine pets that I take care of probably better than she does with her kids. They're up constantly. Uh And honestly, I think I'd probably be better at debating than her because I'm really excited to see about this tonight because they said if... She keeps it short and sweet, she'll be okay. But if she runs her mouth, she's going to get in trouble. Well, uh, that's actually what they're saying about Joe Biden. Yeah, because Joe but... Biden has, because Joe Biden uh, is known for his tendency to ramble. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm not voting for that. I'm going Obama. You know, there's no doubt in my mind. Actually, there's a guy right in front of me that says McCain, uh, no Obama stickers. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, no, yeah, no, uh, that, but you were voting African tribe style. Wait, before you go, you were voting for Obama before Sarah Palin was chosen, right? Oh yeah, by far. Because you know what, I if 
if McCain dies, then I don't really want this chick that I'd rather go to Starbucks and have a day day with and uh, go sit down and have some coffee with her. I don't yeah. want her running this country because I know we'll go straight to hell. Uh, I understand. John, thank you. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom The artist, by the way, on that song was Figo. And the song is called Red, White, and Milf. Uh, can people uh, hear that on the Internet anywhere? Probably. We'll find out. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. So I come on the air and I say, um, hey, <laughs> I just think the woman's a moron, an idiot, a fool. And, uh, boy, I can't believe the email that came in after that. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we have Sarah Palin now, and uh, this is the interview with Katie Couric, where Katie Couric asked her to talk about uh, various Supreme Court decisions. This is Sarah Palin with Katie Couric. What other Supreme Court decisions do you disagree with? Mm. Well, let's see. There's, of course, in, in the great history of America, there have been rulings that um, there's never going to be absolute consensus by every American, and um, there are those issues, again, like Roe v. Wade, where I believe our best held on a state level and addressed there. So, um, you know, going through the history of America, there there would be others, but... Um, Can you think of any? Well, I, I would think of, of any, again, that could best be dealt with on a more local level. Maybe I would take issue with, but... Um, you know, as as a mayor and then as a governor and even as a vice president, if I'm so privileged to serve, I wouldn't be in a position of changing those things, but in supporting the law of the land as it as it reads today. So in other words, she can't name any other decisions. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Taylor on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, Taylor. I'm a first-time, short-time listener. Thank you. And, you know, I don't agree with everything you say, man, but I find your show entertaining as well as intellectually stimulating. And this, and that's the problem that I have with Sarah Palin. I have a master's degree in history. You know, I was a 3-5 student. I've done extensive research. I know the history of this country. I know intelligence when I hear it. I know intelligence when I see it. And I think as a nation, you know, when we say that someone that is intelligent, someone that is articulate is uh, an elitist, I think that's the problem. When intelligence is held up as being an elite thing and being bad, you know we are on the wrong track in this country, and that's what's going on. I mean, we're ready. We already elected an idiot, George Bush, who just buffooned his way through uh, through the office, and and we're on the precipice of possibly having a vice president that that that, that makes George uh, George Bush look like a Rhodes Scholar. I mean, Bill Clinton was a Rhodes Scholar. Let's get back to the day when we have politicians that have advanced degrees, master's degrees, PhD. PhDs from the likes of Harvard, Princeton, and Yale and didn't just skate through on C averages. Let's have people that can look and examine and analyze a problem and come up with a solution that is based off of empirical evidence and not based off of, well, you know, I can see Russia from Alaska. I mean, that had to be the most absurd statement I've ever heard. And she keeps what? saying it. She said it to Charlie Gibson on ABC, and then she said it to Katie Couric on CBS. Yeah, and it's that she repeats saying it, and this goes to show that she is not an intelligent person. She doesn't have the intellectual capacity or the analytical skills to truly understand what she's saying. I mean, she can parrot what the, the, the talking points they give her, and she parrots them really well. But as far as being able to sit back and say, well, I can independently come to a conclusion by the evidence that is presented is, is obvious just by her not being able to say what, what she reads. I mean, I wake up in the day, and the first thing I read is, four different sources on what is going on in the world so I can have a well-rounded view. And, and that's what America needs to get back to, critical thinking, analysis. And, you know, I think if people took that view, a lot of the callers that call you that say they have problems with chicks, a lot of the chicks that are running around being hoes, having babies, and, and being babies' mamas, that, that wouldn't happen. If they were critically thinking, they would say, well, is this dude going to be able to do this for me? And they'd critically think and say no, and they wouldn't go down that road with that dude. But we live in a world of idiots, and, 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 and it's sad. Uh, no doubt about it. We celebrate stupidity in this country. There's uh, 
such a uh, just a pathetic situation uh, where we think that people who are stupid are endearing. Uh, you know, I think this is the reality show mentality of our country. And uh, I think people look at uh, Sarah Palin like she's uh, like the, she's the winner on Survivor rather than that she's running for vice president of the United States. Pretty outrageous. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Anthony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, very nice. Yeah, I actually uh, disagree with uh, most the uh, most of the callers. I'm actually for Palin and Ob- and. Uh, and McCain. Well, I'm not talking about whether you're for or against. The question is whether Sarah Palin's a moron. And, of course, there's really no doubt about that. Uh, I, I mean, I do understand how she mixes up or at least, uh, you know, fumbled on that uh, on that question. But... Fumbled? Fumbled? I mean, she couldn't name one Supreme Court decision other than Roe v. Wade. Not yeah. one. Yeah, understandable. And that is uh, that's a pretty big ding. But, you know... To be honest. See, this is vice president we're talking about. You know, you can get away with being the governor of Alaska and not knowing major Supreme Court decisions, but come on, vice president, maybe president. How can you say that, uh, well, you you know, you, you, you have an opinion about all these decisions. You don't know what any of them are. I don't, I, I, for some, I disagree. I, I don't think, uh, just, I mean, just, uh, from listening to Obama and all his speeches and, uh, forget much- Obama. We're not talking about Obama. We're talking about Sarah Palin. All right. Well, I, I personally agree that, uh, or, so you okay. think she's Albert Einstein then, do you? No, no, I don't believe she's Albert Einstein. You think I, she's I intelligent? But qualified than she is. You think she's intelligent? That's the question. Can you answer it? Are you hiding from me, Anthony? There we go. Don't want to answer the question. Because he knows what the answer is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Justin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. You know, I think the supporters for Sarah Palin make two fundamental mistakes when they say, they all say the same thing. We want an average common person in office who will support us. And there's two mistakes you make with that statement. First of all, you do not want an average common person. You want a superb person in office to support you. And the second mistake they make in that uh, assumption is that just because someone is average and common, that means they'll support the average common person. In fact, it's often the ob- the opposite of, uh, of that, uh, you know, supposition. So- I want the people in charge to be smarter than me. Exactly, exactly. Not only do you want them smarter than you, but, you know, this, they always say, oh, because this person is average and common, they will thus support us. Right. That's not true. In fact, this average common person you put in office is easily manipulated by lobbyists and by, you know, private interests. So well, they not to mention the fact the average, the average person doesn't have the same opinion on everything. Are you kidding me? Some, some average people are uh, pro-choice. Some average people are anti-abortion. Some average people are in favor of the bailout. Some average people are against it. That is that is why, Tom, I say whenever I hear them, oh, you know, she's average, she's common, we want her in office. If I go to a doctor, I do not want an average common person. I want someone who is superb and intelligent. The same with a lawyer. Come on, don't you want a doctor? Problem. Don't you want a doctor you can have a beer with? As long as he knows what he's doing before the beer, you know? And the same thing goes with a vice president or president. I want them with a background in economics. I want some background in law. I want them to be able to answer questions with facts and not dodge them like you showed us with that Supreme Court question when I asked her another question about in the last 27 or such years, what is something McCain has done to, you know, change the economy? She had no examples. Nothing. That's because there are no examples. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. On occasion, I may wake up and uh, be dreaming that, hey, no one's in the house, it's empty. What would it be like just to wake up, go work out, play some tennis, play a little bit of piano, go for a bike ride, and then go out and hang out? You want to know? <laughs> Stop by my home tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 
at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number, Sarah Palin. Do you think she's an idiot? Here is some more of Sarah Palin talking to Katie Couric. You've said, quote, John McCain will reform the way Wall Street does business. Other than supporting stricter regulations of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac two years ago, can you give us any more examples of his leading the charge for more oversight? I think that the example that you just cited with his warnings two years ago about Fannie and Freddie, that that's paramount. That's more than a heck of a lot of other senators and representatives did for us. But he's been in Congress for 26 years. He's been chairman of the Powerful Commerce Committee. And he is almost always sided with less regulation, not more. He's also known as the Maverick, though, taking shots from his own party and certainly taking shots from the other party, trying to get people to understand what he's been talking about, the need to reform government. I'm just going to ask you one more time not to belabor the point. Specific examples in his 26 years of pushing for more regulation. I'll try to find you some and I'll bring them to you. (laughs) Doesn't that sound like some of the callers we have on the show? (laughs) I'll try to find some and I'll bring them to you. Javier, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing great. Good, good. Well, you know, I'm not the most politically savvy person in the world, but I can tell you this, Mike. Sarah Palin is a better pick than uh, the other side. The other side is just a couple of socialist pigs, you know, and that's that's all. That's all. We're not doing. talking. We're not talking about the politics of the person, because as I have said, um, if the Republicans chose Condoleezza Rice, we wouldn't be doing this show. Condoleezza Rice, who is also a conservative Republican and whose politics I don't usually agree with, uh, is whip smart. Really, really super intelligent. Smarter than me. Smarter than anyone I know. And that's the kind of people you want to see in office. So we're not talking about whether her politics are right or wrong. Or whether uh, Barack Obama's politics are right or wrong, or Joe Biden's politics are right or wrong, we're talking about intelligence. Yes, well, she's, she's stupid. Gotta some, she's got to have some kind of intelligence, or she wouldn't be in the position that she's in. No, today. no, that has nothing to do with it. Uh, you, uh, McCain, could have picked a moron. Well, that's true, but strategically, do, what do you think of that last? What What was that last word you said? Uh, strategically. Strategically, yes. yes. What is the move. strategy of picking an idiot? <laughs> well, well, they explain opinion. the strategy to me. Well, I'm assuming that he picked her because, uh, you know, the Democrats wanted a Hillary Clinton in there. They couldn't do it. So, uh, you know, it's a good strategic move to get a, a female. Yeah, but why would you assume? What, would Paris Hilton be a good choice also? No, but I think isn't she, why isn't not? She the only, isn't she the only why female not? governor we Paris Hilton? Yeah. Well. I don't think she has the experience Sarah Palin has. <laughs> but, but the point is, I'm talking about intelligence here. Yeah. Don't well, you think have... intel? Do you like that last answer when she was talking to Katie Couric? I loved it. Yeah, why? Tell, like, explain why, specifically. Because she sounded like a ditzy broad. And she is a ditzy broad. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you, James, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, Tom, you know someone's a true idiot when Saturday Saturday Night Live can make fun of them by directly quoting them. I don't know if you saw it uh, last week, but Tina Fey, she does a direct quote of that Katie Couric interview, and it's hilarious. Yeah, Uh, I did see that, as a matter of fact, and I I thought it was hysterically funny. Yeah, if they... uh, by some miracle they get uh, elected, Saturday Night Live is going to have a heyday with them. It's uh, sad, but it'll make their life easy. Well, it's and it uh, make a lot of people's lives easy. Uh, every kind of comedian you can name. Uh, Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? How you doing? Doing okay. 
All right. Hey, I just want to call up and let you know that you know, I was actually a McCain supporter um, back when this, the primary started and everything. And after the Republican National Convention and after he chose Sarah Palin, I mean, I'm, I'm all for Obama at this point. Sarah Palin, I absolutely agree with you. I have to tell my family members the same thing, my friends. She's an absolute moron. She's an idiot. And, you know, McCain said the line once that he would rather lose an election than lose a war. Um, it's apparent through his smear campaigns and especially after choosing Sarah Palin that he'd rather lose his integrity than lose an election. It, it's ridiculous. Thank you for that, Daniel. John on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. How are you this evening? Doing great. Good. Um, calling up from uh, beautiful midtown Manhattan here. Uh, I think you guys are uh, being just a little too hard on her. I don't think she's all that stupid. I mean, Really? Yeah, yeah, so you thought that answer for Katie Couric, that it demonstrated intelligence? Well, we'll see what she does tonight. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm asking a question to you. You're doing what she does. Oh, what? I ask you a question, and you answer a question I didn't ask. All right. I'll get I back said to you. specifically, did you think the answer you just heard her, heard her giving to Katie Couric indicated intelligence? What, that I'll get back to you? <laughs> After she fumbled and stumbled and filibustered and tried to hide the fact that she didn't know the answer. Yeah, well... We, I suppose. We do you need to hear it again? I can play it back. Nah, nah, I don't listen to much of that stuff anyway. How about the other one we played earlier? What do you think of that? Which one? Uh, earlier, when she was trying to think of Supreme Court decisions, and couldn't name any. Yeah, well, I don't know how many people out there really could do. I don't even know if, how many Barack could answer because he didn't do a whole lot either. Uh, well, as someone who graduated first in his class at Harvard Law School, yeah. I'd be willing to bet he can name a lot of them. Well, they said that he can't, that they've looked into that, and they've also looked at his... Oh, no, uh, no, who looked into that? Who said that? I've heard it on some of your, uh, you know, your competitors. You're not the no, 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 forget show. talk radio. I don't take talk shows as credible sources of information, including my own. Yeah. I'm asking you about credible sources. A Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, Fox News even. Can you name any of them? I don't spend much time looking at any listening to them. I listen to you and All two right. other guys, and that's it. All right, but the point is, uh, you know, what's expressed on this show and other talk shows is opinion. I understand. Okay, my opinion is Sarah Palin's an idiot, and I happen to believe she is an idiot. Eh, well, we're, uh, she's, only, she's running for vice president. The fact that it was said on the radio doesn't necessarily make it true. Yeah. Well, we'll see how she and does And the same I... thing with Sean Hannity or whoever else you're listening to. Uh, can I say who I listen to? Sure, go ahead. I listen to Neil Bortz, and I listen to Larry Kudlow, and you. That's it. Does Larry Kudlow have a radio show? Yeah, Saturday mornings. He talks about the economy. He's very good. Quite a good show. And uh, who? Uh, Neil Bortz, what station is he on? Well, I get him uh, over the Internet also, but he's a big kind oh. of libertarian speaker. Right. So those are my two. Yeah, you know, well, I, I'm willing to bet that the person who graduated first in his class at Harvard Law School can name more than one Supreme Court decision. Uh, well, well, we'll see. I mean, uh, I could name a couple too, but you know, I just uh, yeah, and you could uh, that would be make you able to name more than Sarah Palin, the candidate for vice president. If they called me up and asked me to be vice president, I'd jump at it in a minute. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be doing nothing, you know. You, may, you probably would, but if you went on TV and they said to ask you these questions, you'd be hamana hamana hamana. Maybe, and I just don't say, look, I'm just here in case the die kills over. That's it. <laughs> You know, you had you had Gore who developed the internet, so we had a rocket scientist in the past. You had Quayle who couldn't spell potato. It's a lot of pressure. I mean, you probably. By the way, Dan Quayle, Dan Quayle looks like Albert Einstein next to Sarah Palin. Yeah, I don't in fact, know. he I looks mean, like he looks like Albert Einstein next to George Bush. I mean, you know, back in the days, look, you had Johnson. They used to bring these guys in to balance the ticket and stuff. So, he, he, did they do something because they got a woman? Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? I'll tell but, you what, you, I'd, I'd, I'd put Hubert Humphrey up against Sarah Palin any time. Yeah, but again, the only thing that I have, well, what I liked about her is that she's a governor, and I prefer a governor in that position. Cause it's I'd like a that, governor yeah. of a state where people are not lunatics. Well, I don't know. They all said Reagan Outcasts. Was well, they said Reagan was an idiot when he was I don't in. believe Reagan was an idiot. I, I don't believe he was of supreme intelligence or yeah. exceptional intelligence, yeah. but I believe he was of average intelligence, and uh, that that's not what we're saying about Sarah Palin. Yeah, you're just saying she's an idiot. She's an idiot. Yeah, well, hey, look and at come that. on, come on. Uh, those two answers we played you, coupled with uh, her comment that she knows about foreign policy because there's an island in Alaska where you can see Russia... Maybe that was a bad joke, just like Biden saying... Oh, Ro Ro well, Ro there's Ro a lot of bad jokes here. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, she's thrusting it. I mean, if it came on to me, it'd be tough. But, you know, if I get the VP nod there, Tom, I'll have you over the Naval Observatory. We'll drink some Thank wine. You. Sounds we'll bring good in, to me. Bring in a few, uh, <laughs> we'll bring in a few porn stars and everything. Bring in some whores and get the job done. Yeah, but I bet you know, we'll get the Georgetown interns. <laughs> One's down Sounds there. Sounds good to me. Oh, since I'm calling from Midtown Manhattan, take me out Spitzer style. Spitzer style. Here you go. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Jim on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, I was undecided until I got a load of uh, Sarah Palin. She is a MILF, but she's a moron. No soon question. to be a GILF. Yes, soon to be a GILF. But uh, when she says the Iraq war is a task from God, doesn't that make her like a jihadist, the, the, uh, the other guys? <laughs> yeah. Just just a question. And, and I'm uh, curious about uh, why she thinks God uh, would be in favor of uh, killing people, even in, uh, the innocent people who get killed by accident in a war. Well... No telling what a moron thinks. This woman probably thinks the Flintstones are, are, are a reality series based on her. Well, that's how she knew the dinosaurs and men walk together. Hey, very cool. But, uh, hey, that's all I had to say. Can you take me out with a bong hit and a thank you, thank you, Jesus? Yes, I can, Jim. Thank you, Jesus. Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm really Hi. upset about this whole thing. I mean, the lady is just uh, completely ridiculous. Um, you know, I think that they that they really anticipated what was going to happen, you know, because women are really stupid in general. That's why they have that whole Puma group. It's really emotional. Maybe the emotions get involved with their politics. I think it's kind of ridiculous. That well, uh, we're out of time, but I thank you for that. The Tom Likas Show.